What's up everyone, Tape Down here. Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be sharing with you how to replace the shell on your Game Boy Advance SP, which is very, very easy to do. It just takes a little bit of time and patience. So this one here does have a little scratches and stuff like that on. I'm going to be replacing it with this Pikachu edition one. Now to get replacement shells, buyer beware. Um, I actually ordered some from New York and some from China. And the ones from New York were $40 each. The ones from China were $20 each. The ones from China were way better quality than the ones from actually New York, which were double the money. The only thing the ones from New York were better for was the screwdrivers that were included. So now depending on which ones you buy, the limited edition ones will be a little bit more money than the just standard colored ones. But to me, if I'm replacing it, I want to have something that looks really cool to add to my collection, which is why I'm doing this one here. Now this one here does come not only with the buttons, but it does come with a new screen, which I honestly don't think I'm going to replace. There's no damage, nothing wrong with this screen here. And a lot of times from what I've seen and the ones that I've replaced, this is the third one that I'm gonna be replacing. I have the NES one already in my collection. Sometimes the screens that come with them have a little bit of damage because they just come with no protection on that. This is literally how it came in the package. Uh, but I do get the ones that not only have that, but they do have the hardware, even though a lot of the time the screws in that, I don't use the new ones. I always reuse the old ones just because I find it's easier for me. But I also have the ones that include the stickers for underneath. As well, if you don't have them, the screwdrivers. So you will need the Phillips head, which does come with it. Most of the time, this is the most common thing that people will have. So you likely will have the Phillips head one, but the one you might not have is the Tri-Wing one, which is right here, which is just for the Nintendo's products. So first thing you're gonna want to do is disassemble uh, your uh, Game Boy first. So to do that, the first thing you're gonna want to do is to take out the battery and remove this panel here. Uh, and it is a Phillips head for that screw. Just like that. And then you just wanna take out the battery. Next, you're gonna to want to take the tri-wing. You're gonna to want to take out the four that are hidden in here. The one that is underneath where the battery was and the one where the games do slide in, that, that tri-wing screw as well. All six of those screws. Next, once you have all six screws removed, you are going to want to take off the bottom here and set that to the side. Actually, sorry, there is something you do want to take out and let it focus here. That is this part here for the new one. Whenever you put the battery back in and put the cover back on, it will be missing the, uh, the holder for the screw. So you are gonna want to pop that out. And it is just this square piece here which is easy to miss. Sometimes the kits, I think this one might have it included, but sometimes they don't include it. So I do recommend keeping that one before putting this off to the side. Now with this here, you are gonna need the Phillips head. And there is, for the motherboard, three screws that you will need to remove. Just like that, the motherboard is unscrewed. So you're gonna to want to gently lift up on it. And on the back here, this cable here, you're gonna to want to be very, very careful for. This part here, this white piece on both sides of the ribbon where it connects here, you see these black clips. You're gonna to want to take your screwdriver or your nail and try to clip them down into the open position and then the cable should slide right out. Just like that and that and just like that the cable slides right out and of course we're going to be reusing the motherboard so you're going to want to set that to the side. The other thing you're going to want to keep is the speaker from yours. So I'm gonna set the speaker aside as well. And also the little pad 
that was underneath the speaker. I'm gonna save that as well for my replacement one as well. Now underneath the ribbon cable here, there is another uh, Phillips head screwdriver, uh, screw. You're gonna to want to take that out. And that actually removes the cover on the other side that hides the uh, cable. Next, you're gonna to want to flip this over, open up the screen, and we're gonna be removing the five covers to reveal the screws underneath. Now for this here, the first thing I'm gonna do is use a uh, flat head screwdriver bit uh, to try to pry them out. If that doesn't work, sometimes they are stuck in or glued in. I found that uh, replacing the few that I did. So if they're really stuck in there, I will use a knife to take them out. But first I'm gonna to try to use this here. And you are gonna to want to be careful because if you aren't planning on replacing the screen, you don't want to scratch or damage the screen. So if you're gonna be prying this out with a screwdriver or a knife, you're gonna to want to be very, very cautious doing so. And just like that, all of the covers are out. Now you're gonna to want to be very careful when removing the screws here. So I'm gonna shake my tri wing and when removing them, I actually put my finger over the screen so I can't slip and scratch the screen to remove the screw. So I'll do it like this. Now once you do have all five screws out, you're gonna want to close it once again. You're gonna take the cover right off and push that off to the side. And then you should be able to lift out the screen here just like so and gently pull that cable through the slots and save the screen as well. The only other thing you're gonna to want to save from your previous one is the hinges that are in here for the door. You do not get replacement ones. I think you can probably order them. Um, I'm not sure what they cost, but it's easier just to take them out of here. So to do this, you're gonna to want to take a uh, sturdy screwdriver. I don't recommend the ones that come with it just because they are kind of cheap and you might break them and then you won't be able to reassemble um, your replacement shell. But I'm going to take my screwdriver here and just going to push in the side. Now be cautious. Don't worry so much. If you are replacing the shell, as long as the hinge is salvageable, the case here might break depending on how hard they are to take out. If it does, don't worry about it because you are replacing the shell as long as the hinge is still good. Just like that, with a little bit of pressure, the hinge does come out very nicely. And just like that, both hinges are out. So now I can push this right off to the side. Then you're gonna want to go and take off the blue colored cap or whatever the color is of your previous one. You're gonna to want to replace that with the one that comes with uh, your replacement shell. So if the Pokemon one or the Pikachu one, it is a brown one. So now to reassemble, you're gonna to want to put the hinges in reverse and you're basically gonna be reversing all the steps I just showed you. So you can take your hinge here you're gonna take it and you're going to line up the opening just like that. It should be able to go half or almost three quarters of the way in, just leaving the colored end out. Now once you have them both in about three quarters of the way, you're gonna to want to push and apply pressure. This side here pushing in, this side here pushing out. You're gonna to want to open it up while applying that pressure. And by the time you get to the open part here, they should be forced and click in. Next, you're gonna to want to take the screen. You're gonna to want to put the cable and slide it back into the hole. And then you're gonna to want to line up the screen back again. Okay, just like that. And then you're gonna take the cover and you're gonna put it back on just like that. And you're gonna to want to open it up and you're gonna to want to put the screws back around uh, the five screws back in. And this time you're gonna to want to be very, very careful because you're not gonna to want to scratch the screen or the shell putting them back in. Once you have the screws back in, you're gonna to want to replace the caps covering them. Now with the replacement, you should have gotten these ones here. These are ones that are stick-on. I like the ones and prefer the ones that are non-stick-on. Uh, the ones I've done for my e uh, NES edition one were those ones. These ones here 
are just more of a pain. So you are going to want to uh, see which ones are included and just go ahead and just put those back in. I find they're just harder to manipulate and put back in the spots. Next, once you have the caps replaced, you are going to want to once again close. Next, you're going to want to go and you're going to want to put the speaker back in. So first, we're going to put the uh, little pad that I saved followed by the speaker so I don't forget. Now once you have the speaker in, before you go and put the motherboard in, you do want to make sure you put the screw back in and the other caps. So I'm going to put this little piece of cardboard that does come with uh, the replacement shell. I'm going to put it back on here just to hold uh, the buttons in so the buttons do not fall out. I'm going to flip this back over here. I'm going to line it up just like that, making sure that it's not going to bend or damage the uh, ribbon cable. And then I'm going to put that screw back in, which is a Phillips head. Now once you have that in, I'm going to take this cardboard now out. And we're going to put the motherboard back in. Now to do this, you do have to connect the motherboard once again to this clip here. And this is the only other hardest part, and that is to line this up and put the motherboard back in. Everything else is easy sailing. Once you do have it lined up here, those black tabs, you are going to want to make sure you do push them up. Once you have the motherboard back in, you're gonna to want to go and put the three screws back holding the motherboard back in. You're gonna to want to make sure that you do have the power and the volume button on the motherboard. Sometimes it will fall out. So before you reassemble everything, make sure you do have those buttons on. Then before you go, and put it all back together. Make sure you put the little tab that holds the battery down. Make sure you put it back in your replacement shell here, that little square tab. It just clicks in just like that. Then you're gonna want to put it on and screw it all back together. You're gonna want to turn it back and put it back together, clicking it all around. Now you're gonna want to put all five screws back in. Next. Once you have the screws back in, you're going to want to put the battery back in, just like that. And you're going to want to put the battery cover back on and secure it. And there you have it. Your shell is replaced. The only other thing you have to do is put the uh, sticker back on saying Nintendo and to put the stickers back on the bottom as well. But before I do that, I am just going to turn it on here and test it and make sure that it does turn on just like that. So I am gonna leave this video here, hope you guys enjoyed, and hope now you know how to replace your shell on your Game Boy Advance SP. I'm gonna leave this video here, I'll see you guys in the next one. Please take care, peace.